So what is the measure of, the, of uh, systematic risk? The measure of systematic risk is called beta. And beta is just going to be the standard deviation, the volatility of your company, right? Your company. Divided by the standard deviation of the market. What is the market? The market is everything, but since we can't really measure everything, right, real estate, human resources, and all that, what we do is we say that the market is just going to be a stock index. We, we assume that the stock index is going to be the best reflection of how the market is doing. So what is a stock index? Uh, it's going to be a regional stock index that, that, that comes from a stock exchange in your different countries. Just to follow this example, because I'm using all the historical data from the US, it will be like you've heard of this, like the S&P, for example, 500. You know, any index that, that has the most largest and active uh, stocks in that market, that is going to be a reflection of what the market is doing. Okay, And what is this? This is the correlation coefficient, the correlation. Okay, between between whom? Between I. What is I? Between your company and the market. Okay, so let me give you an example. Suppose that your standard deviation of the company. Let me change this color. Standard deviation of your company. Right, the volatility of your company is thirty percent. And suppose that the volatility of the market is 15%. So just by what's in the parentheses alone, what does that mean? It means that your company is twice as risky, twice as volatile as the market. 30 divided by 15 is 2. Okay. Now, that's true. You are twice as volatile as the market. Now, but what happens if the correlation between your company and the market is such that it's not a one-to-one. -one. It's not a 100% correlation, meaning that you know your company is such that when the market goes up by 10%, right? Your market does not, your company does not necessarily go up by the same amount. There's a certain, there's a certain lower correlation. Let's suppose that your correlation is say 80%. What does it mean to be 100% correlated? It means that whatever happens to that market, if it changes by a certain amount, you're always going to change by a proportional amount, uh, always in the same way. Right? It doesn't have to be a one-to-one, -one, but it always has to be the same proportion. So every time the market goes up by 10, if you always go, go up by 4, then uh, when the market falls by 10, then you always fall by 4. That, if you always follow that one-to-one -one relationship, then you're going to be, you're going to have a 100% correlation. In other words, to make a long story short, if you have 100% correlation, basically your movements mirror that of the market when it's going up and down. Okay. If you have only 80% correlation, it means that you don't always follow the market when it goes up and down, right? And so 80% of the time, let's just say you, that's what you're doing. So think of it this way. And from a diversification standpoint, what we just discussed in the previous slide, from a diversification standpoint, if you have lower correlation, what does that achieve? Does it achieve a higher diversification or a lower diversification? And the answer is, if you if if you are have a 80% correlation coefficient, then the lower the correlation coefficient, that means that the, the less affected you are by market movements, then you have potentially a higher diversification benefit. Does that make sense? If you want to be protected from volatility, you prefer to have assets that don't move in the same way as the economy does, because that would allow you to offset those effects on the good and the bad, but the offsetting in the, in the end reduces your volatility. So think of it this way. The lower the, co the correlation, right, the less, uh, the less alike your asset is to the, to the way the market moves, then the more the diversification benefits you can achieve because you found an asset that can protect you from, you know, from the volatility in the, of market movements. So let's go back to our example. The beta is a measure of systematic risk. That's the important thing. The measure of systematic risk, which is the only risk we really care about, right? Remember, here it is, systematic risk. So, if you are have a company that's twice as volatile as the market, okay, that's not the beta because you have to also include what? Not only the volatility of your company with respect to the market, but you also have to include 
the correlation, how it correlates, how similarly it behaves with respect to the market. And in our case, the correlation coefficient in my example is 0.8. So what is their beta of my company? Let's say 30% divided by 15 is 2, right? That's in the, inside the parentheses. Times, what is the correlation coefficient? It's 0.8. So, so 2 times 0.8 gives me 1.6. That's my beta, 1.6. Now, what does that mean? What does the beta of 1.6 mean? It means that when the market goes up, say by 10%, your company stock is going to go up by how much? 1.6 times. That would be 16%. Okay. When the market falls by 10%, what does that mean? That your company's prices will fall by what? How, how much? By negative 16%. Okay, so it's when you get a minus 10, you go up not minus 16. When you get a positive 10 in the market, your company goes up to positive 16. So which of the two is more volatile, the market or your company? Because the beta is higher than one, then that means that your company is more volatile than the market. The market can go up and down by 10 and minus 10, and you will be going up, your company will be going up and down by positive 16 and minus 16. So there's more volatility in your company compared to the market. How do we know that for sure? A beta of 1 means that your company is just as volatile as the market. A beta greater than 1 means your company is more volatile than the market. A beta that's less than 1 means that your company is less volatile than the market. So above 1 means you have above, system, above average systematic risk. A beta that is below 1 is below average systematic risk. Okay, so just conceptually understand, I uh, hope you understand what beta means. Beta is just a measure of systematic risk. And what does that mean? It just, it gives you a number that if higher than one means that you, that you are investing in a company that has a higher risk in the market. If the beta of the company is lower than one, that you're investing in a company that has lower risk than the market. Now, what does that mean? If a company has a higher risk in the market, then you will be expecting a higher return than say another company that has a beta that is lower than one. Okay, So we're going to transform very soon, we're going to transform that measure of risk, that beta, into a return expectation. But for now, the next uh, recording will, uh, will, will show you how we would go about finding the beta for a company using actual uh, market prices. And this is not a, this is, lastly, this is not a current table. I just want to show you uh, one issue with, with betas, right? Uh, the issue is that um, depending on where you go, if you go to Yahoo Finance or you go somewhere else, um, you may find different betas. Like for example, for GE, notice that one source said, oh, this company's beta is 1.2. Well, the other source says, oh, this company's beta is 1.67. Clearly, this is not good, right? This is not helpful. So what I'm going to, I always suggest is you always use a single source for your uh, information for your beta information. Otherwise, you're going to be, you know, in this case, you know, you're going to be jumping from value to value. That's not that's not very helpful. Now, if you're wondering why is it that you know these things can be so uh, so different, well, in, in certain uh, aspects, it's because of the way the formula is defined. What is the market? I said the S&P 500, right? What if somebody says, no, I'm going to use as my market, as my reference, not the S&P 500, but the Dow Jones or the Wilshire 5000 or some other stock index in the U.S., right? Then that will be a problem because then we are going to be using different market, different different um, measures of what the market is. And, you know, people can do that because everybody has a right to choose what they think is the, is the best reflection of what's happening in the economy. But let's understand that when you do, you're going to get different beta values. So if, if in your different countries, you say, I'm going to uh, uh, f use a certain stock index, and maybe somebody else uses a different variation of that stock index, then you will, you will have a different level of beta. And that's okay as long as you understand that that, that that difference comes because of these choices we're making. Maybe those choices that we're making are, you know, reasonable choices. But let's understand that, that this is numerically what, what can happen. So all I can I'll suggest is always try to use a single source of information and always be consistent with that information. If you change, if you say, on the one hand, I'm going to use this market, and then you go ahead and say, now I'm going to use a different uh, stock market index, then you're going to uh, you know, have problems because you're going to be changing the numbers, not because events are changing, but because you're changing the way you're defining your, your inputs. 
Okay, and the last thing I want to, uh, I guess, uh, mention is that whenever you you talk about what is the standard deviation of this company, what is the standard deviation of this market, what is the correlation between the two, what you're really doing is is looking at historical data and finding out historically, you know, how much volatility you've observed. When I say that. Assume that your company has 30% volatility or standard deviation. What does that really mean? It means that historically, for the pa for the past X number of years, um, your your prices have behaved in such a way that they had a volatility or standard deviation of 30%. So here's my what I wanted to make you aware of. What if I choose if I'm observing the last three years in order to get that 30% and that 15% for the market? What if somebody else comes up and says, no, I'll choose four years or five years? Well, if you do that, then obviously you're also going to get different values. Okay. So the suggested approach is to use, let's say, monthly values for the next three to five years, monthly returns, and always use the same market index consistently. Okay. Don't change historical time series in order to make your estimations. Don't change the index in order to make your estimations because then it will, you will get a different value for sure. Try to be consistent. Now, if all this is not making sense right now when I'm describing these, these numbers, that's because we have not, I have not yet shown you how we will get the beta numerically, which is the next, the, uh, the target of the next recording. Just keep in mind that beta is going to be affected by one, th one what is the stock index you're going to use? And two, what is the, the historical length of the observations you're using in order to make these estimations, okay? Thank you. This is the end of this recording.